She has also been an active member of Toastmasters since 2019 and volunteers on pub as our public relations manager for Toastmasters District 38. She is definitely an expert in this topic. Please help me welcome Hannah Mershon. Thank you, Anne. I appreciate the intro. There'll be a couple opportunities to participate throughout. I know sometimes in big groups, it's awkward to unmute yourself or call out. So if you'd prefer to participate via the chat box when there's those opportunities, please feel free. As you can see, this is also being recorded, so you'll be able to view it after. And there's a few folks who were not able to attend live and they will receive the recording, recording if they registered as well. Finally, I'm dropping my email in the chat. Most likely there'll be some questions that we don't get to or you'll think of something after. That's the best way to reach me. And now I will share my screen. And Anne, if you can just be make sure to admit people who are coming in through the waiting room, that would be great. <clears throat> Today, we're talking all about public relations. As I mentioned in the email and the advertisement for this specific programming, a lot of people sign up to be the vice president of public relations and really focus on the things that are familiar to them, which are often either the website or blog writing, social media, the newsletter, all super important elements and a good part of any public relations strategy in its larger form. A lot of people though don't practice or haven't had a lot of experience in the public relations world. Public relations is what you call earned media. The difference is of course for paid media, you could place an ad in a newspaper, you could boost a post on social media, you could pay to have yourself on a billboard, but earned media means that somebody, a third party wrote about your organization a person, a product, and gave it that extra ounce of credibility in the public eye, which is why it's called earned media or public relations. So this is the first part where you can participate. And again, feel free to throw them in the chat if that's the easiest way to do it. Some of this as a caveat will be localized if you're not from District 38, just because that's where my familiarity is, as well as many of the people who are participating in this meeting, but I promise the overall principles will extend to whatever market you're in. So if you were going to pick up a copy of the Philadelphia Inquirer or whatever local paper or watching 6ABC or your favorite broadcast in the morning, what type of elements, whether it's in the title, the type of story, the visuals, what would make you pause and read or listen to a story? Take a, take a minute, think about it, drop it in the chat, call it out. Local issues. Yeah, definitely. I see in the chat too, a catchy, interesting or uplifting storyline. Definitely, there's so much power that goes into a storyline to get people to click on something. Same with the social media caption or any of those elements. Something positive, definitely, and we'll get into that about how seeing something refreshing on your feed can grab some attention. Something local, that's super important. I've had the opportunity through my other association that I'm part of to talk with a number of reporters and they share all the time. We get pitches for great stories, but they have nothing to do with the Philadelphia region. So important to tie it into the local angle. A fun picture, definitely. Sometimes PR campaigns are built completely around fun visuals. So it's definitely a great way to grab some attention. And the last one I see in here is human interest. Definitely. And we'll talk a little bit about how to pick a reporter based on what your topic is. But human interest is often its whole own subject matter. And there's usually a reporter dedicated to that specific beat. In the email I sent with a reminder for tonight's event, as well as in the event follow-up email, I'll send the links again. There's many great examples of how Toastmasters clubs in the United States and internationally have landed some of this earned media coverage. 
I encourage you to read through some of those stories. They'll give you ideas of what types of stories have landed, what types of stories in certain outlets have landed, different angles that you can consider as some things like club contests and DTMs extend to every club and can be opportunities for every person. Here's some of the headlines that caught my eyes when I was searching Toastmasters in the news tab of Google. This top one, new youth Toastmasters group in Aiken prepares for first ever graduation gala. Think about how in those eight words, they really packed a punch of exactly what was happening. You know, who it is, where it is, and what's happening, all without even diving into the article. Local Toastmasters earn distinguished award. Again, it's, it's localized. It's personalized. It's about people. Here's one from Jocelyn, who won the world champion of public speaking. The world champion of public speaking is a pharmacist who grew up in Burlington County. Again, the fact that there was a Toastmasters contest wasn't of interest to the reporter. The fact that it was a local person who people could relate to who had a daytime job, one, was what was interesting. Here's a few more. I thought this top one was interesting because it's very different. Toastmasters adopts AI-powered speech analytics technology from Seattle startup Util. So this one's different. It probably landed in a technology reporter's inbox, and they found it interesting to cover. Again, these two are also personalized and localized stories. And you'll see that's a theme. That's Toastmasters is about people. So the people stories are what are going to resonate with a wider audience. I wanted to dive a little bit more into the new youth Toastmaster story, which was the first one that we see up here about the graduation gala. Take a minute to scan through this. I have some arrows and we'll talk through some of the elements of what made this a good story or a good pitch. But think about it for a minute as you read through this. Here's some elements that I caught. And if you found others that I don't point out, feel free to drop them in the chat for other people to see as well. The second part of the press release is on the next slide. You don't want to make the font too small. So first, again, it's a great opening sentence. Clearly says who it is, who it's for, what's happening. If a reporter was reading that, they would immediately know whether or not they wanted to read more, as well as the reader would feel that way as well. I really like that they focus in on the youth. Anything that has to do with a specific group, especially if it's youth, older adults, minorities, if there's some like specific group that you can carve out, that'll also draw attention to your story or press release. Quotes. Quotes are super important, not just because they personalize it, but it breaks up the content. It's boring to read paragraph after paragraph that's the same length and the same cadence and it's just third person talking about a thing happening. If you're getting to that point and you're typing up a story and you're like, I just need to break this up with something, repurpose an existing paragraph into a quote. It's totally fine to draft quotes on behalf of people as long as you ask them to proof it afterwards. If it feels like it aligns with something that they would say, go ahead and draft it in their perspective. And of course, give them the opportunity to review and offer input. But it's a great way to break up the content when you're typing up these stories. And then a few more elements. Right at the end, again, it talks about how this actually impacted the people that participated. So this is something that impacts their academic careers, can be part of their resumes. It has an impact beyond just the event that happened. And it's looking forward. It's hopeful. Now, a lot of those elements are gonna be things that we talk about here when we talk about pearls. This is something that the agency, AKCG Public Relations Counselors, where I work, has developed, and it's our motto of how we find stories. Whenever a client asks us to get a story covered, whenever a team has a brainstorm and we have potential ideas that we're thinking about sharing with the media, we always make sure it fits at least one of these categories 
And if it fits even more, all the better. So we're gonna run through these. P is for person focus. Again, like we talked about, people love people stories, not institutional stories. Tether your message to people. The fact that your Toastmasters Club exists is important to you. It's not really important to anyone else. Doesn't mean that you're not doing great things, but people wanna read about people. I guarantee that if you pick up almost any section of any newspaper, you'll find that to be true. I actually pulled out a copy of the Inquirer that I have here just to test my theory. The front story of the sports section wasn't about the Eagles themselves. It was about Nick Sirianni's transformation as a coach. It was personalized. Oftentimes, the stories will be about a specific player, a coach, a spouse, a person who benefited from the Autism Foundation, so on and so forth. In the life and culture section of the Inquirer, there's an article about the Schuylkill, but it's about aquanauts, they call them, who are jumping into the Schuylkill for a swim. And it talks all about them and their experiences training. In this one for the Philadelphia Inquirer, this is the episode that Jocelyn was in when she won the World Championship of Public Speaking. Again, it wasn't about Toastmasters. It wasn't about the speech competition. Sure, it was mentioned in there, absolutely. But it was really about Jocelyn. It was about the theme of her speech. It was about how she overcame adversity. It was about her experiences and how her dad showed up to her competition. It was all about people. It was all person focused at the end of the day. The E in Pearl stands for eccentric. I was scrolling through the New York Times before this because they always have interesting headlines. And if you scroll through, you'll see a lot of examples of this. One I found is a Harvard professor prepares to teach a new subject, Taylor Swift. It's different, right? It just, it catches your eye. It's not something you're expecting to see. It's just off the beat, off the wall, a little bit crazy, maybe even perhaps. Those are the types of stories and types of subject lines that might get someone to pause, stop, read your press release, read your pitch. Accessible. I really like this one because sometimes in our hearts, we're thinking when you're thinking about trying to pitch something different, you end up thinking about things that are lofty or feel unattainable to other people. People want to read about things that they can participate in. Maybe if you're talking about a Toastmasters club or a person in your Toastmasters club, think about something they did or something they achieved that could be replicated in someone else's life. For example, maybe someone from your Toastmasters club was able to land a job because of a skill they landed. That's something that could translate to someone else. Make it personal. Talk about the challenges that they overcame while they were in that job seeking process. It's all types of different ways that you can make it accessible to people. But again, people want to read about something they can participate in. Refreshing. This is something that someone dropped in the chat earlier, actually, or something very similar. There's so much negativity in the news today, right? When you open the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, you see things about wars, you see things about politics, you see things about gun violence. What's something that you can offer that is refreshing, that is different, that's going to offer something positive to a news feed? A really good exercise for this, there's an awesome column called The Inspired Life, which is published on the Washington Post by a reporter, Sydney Page. It's her full-time job is just writing these refreshing stories. A couple of her recent headlines. A stranger asked me to take her photograph. It saved my life. Would you click that story? I probably would. Another one. Inspired by man on TV news, boy commits to 10 kind acts for 10th birthday. So you can think, yeah, maybe a kid did 10 nice things in his local neighborhood, but that subject line, that really packs a punch. The L is for local. Again, we already hit this home a lot, so I don't have to overemphasize it here, but how can you tie it into your local community? That'll also help you think about what publication makes the most sense. For example, when Jocelyn, who's from the Voorhees Toastmasters Club, won the competition, we got the Voorhees local paper that's delivered door to door to publish that story. 
made sense. Someone in their backyard, somebody could join the club. It's a club at the local library. There was a lot of good angles for them to play off of. And finally, shareable. Something that people want to share. Maybe it's that someone did something kind of cool in their local community. Maybe it's something that they could see someone in their life benefiting from. Maybe if it's a story about a youth program, they'll share it with somebody who has a high schooler in their life. Think about things that people share or that you share in your daily life, whether it's on your news feed or social media or whatever that may be. And feel free to drop questions in the chat throughout. Yeah, I saw someone just drop in the quotes really humanize it. Absolutely. That's one of my favorite ways to break up content. I always include quotes and in press releases or pitches when I'm sending things out. Finding the right story, going through your pearls exercise is the first step, right? And sometimes finding the story is actually the easy part. The harder part is finding where you're actually going to send the story and how you're going to actually get it placed somewhere. First, start with what is your goal? What type of piece is going to make the most sense for you to develop as a public relations manager or somebody helping in this efforts? There's three real tools here, and we won't be able to get too, too deep into them, although we will do a brief overview that you can use. A press release is the most common. I'll share an example of that. And then also in the materials I sent out, Toastmasters has templates of press releases ready for you to use. You don't need to recreate the wheel in most of these. They have press releases developed for club contests, for DTMs, for open houses, and you'll really be able to just pop in your specific information and use those templates. But a press release is probably exactly what you're imagining. It's something that you write in full that you're giving an outlet permission to publish as is. You're essentially writing the story for them and then giving it to them and asking them to share it with their network. A pitch, very different. You are writing to a reporter or a publication with the intent that they will want to learn more, they will interview someone, they will show up to your event, they will want to learn more about the initiative. Definitely a harder exercise and something that takes a little bit of time to master, but definitely still achievable. And a media release. Very similar, but this one's written specifically for an event. The way that this might differ is you'll offer specific visuals or timing of things that a reporter could attend. Maybe say you were having a ribbon cutting or some type of special ceremony. You could outline what time things started, exactly what they might expect to see who they could interview, what the best time is to come. So again, kind of similar to a press release or a pitch, but just a, for a special opportunity. My second tip is to think about what's your angle. You want to write to a reporter regarding something that they cover, right? People are very specialized oftentimes when they're journalists, and they really only write about that topic with some exceptions. So if you're going to pitch a business reporter, obviously have a business angle. Maybe it's about how someone in Toastmasters found a new job through their network. Maybe it's about how their DTM was an accreditation that helped them in their professional goals. Maybe it's a corporate club and it has had some type of interesting event that came up. Human interest is often its whole own beat. Think about a story that might resonate with them or play it against a story that you already have developed. It could be maybe you have multiple generations of a family in your club. Maybe a mom and a daughter have joined. That could be a heartwarming story that a reporter might want to hear about. And technology. I shared that one example. Maybe there is something niche and different about your club and what you're doing, and that might be the right reporter in that time. But just think really carefully about who you're sharing your story with. You want it to be valuable to them so that they will share it because it's because it's valuable. Unfortunately, there's no super secret sauce of how to find a reporter's email address. Although if you are in District 38 and you have your heart set on a specific reporter, I can help you out. 
um, feel free to reach out and I can see if I can dig into some of the paid software that I do have. For many of the main outlets though, they do have their emails listed on the website. This is a screenshot from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Oftentimes they have their bios, a headshot, and then they'll link their email addresses, Twitter accounts, phone numbers on there. I will say phones are a little bit outdated now, but definitely not always something that you, it's not something that you can't consider sometimes. From what I've heard from reporters, if you're going to call, just have something timely or something that they're going to be able to run that week, you know. They probably don't want a phone call about, hey, we have a Toastmasters club that exists. Would you like to visit sometime? Maybe have an open house that you're planning to have that week. Have a story about a contest that just happened. Something that's going to have a reason for them to pick up the phone and talk to you that day. Another trick you can use is social media. Try the reporter's Twitter. A lot of journalists still use Twitter. A lot of them keep their emails in their bios. If they don't, I've DM'd reporters before and gotten responses. Just try a simple message. Hey, saw your human interest reporter at the Inquirer. I have a local Philly person with a great story. Would you want to hear? DM me your email address. Something really simple. Give them some context. You can even try LinkedIn too. Occasionally I've gotten a reporter to answer on there. Depends if they're active or not. You can kind of get a feel for that when you look at their profile. Can take a peek at the chat. Okay. Again, feel free to drop questions in the chat. I can't see all of you because I'm screen sharing, or you can unmute yourself as well. This is the press release that Toastmasters International wrote when Jocelyn won the World Championship of Public Speaking. Thought it was really well written. A lot of great stuff in here. Not only just in how it was formatted, but the quality of the content as well. I did share the link for that in the introductory email and we'll include in the follow-up materials as well. So here's some elements of how to format a press release. And again, Toastmasters International has a lot of these templates pre-built, so you really don't even need to create them from scratch. Should always have your logo included. You can use the Toastmasters International one. If your district or club has a specific one for some reason, you can feel free to pop that in instead. Contact info. Interestingly, most reporters now, when I do get their interest, text me. So if you are comfortable with someone texting you, I under in brackets put call or text sometimes just so they know it's a cell phone number and that they can feel free to reach out via text has worked for me. Put an email address that you're checking regularly. Have a title. Have a title that clearly outlines what the piece they're going to be reading is about. Not only that, but feel free to utilize a subheadline as well if there's something that you'd like to add that is pertinent, you want to float to the top. Always include the city and state in the beginning of the press release, just so they can clearly see quickly that it's localized or where it might make the most sense. There's been times when I've reached out to news bureaus, maybe say I had a client in New York City, but the specific story was in Sleepy Hollow, which is 20 miles outside of New York City. And they've been like, oh, this reporter would actually probably cover that story. And having that clearly outlined right in the beginning will allow them to discern and see that. And finally, at the end of a press release, you'll see these templates. You may be wondering, what is that footer that's at the bottom? It's something that we call boilerplate. It's like three to four sentences about your organization, who you are. It always includes a link to your website, potentially has links to social media profiles as well. It's likely either your mission statement or something extremely similar. This is something that should be the same every time you send it out. Feel free to use Toastmasters International unless you want to develop your own. If so, it'll probably be pretty similar to what they have in terms of the mission of Toastmasters. You might put where you're located, you might put the number of members if you want. We 
like I said, Toastmasters International has a ton of resources. They not only have press release templates already ready for you, they have a whole media kit with logos, brand colors, they have training videos, all types of things. You really don't have to think of much from scratch, thankfully, for, because Toastmasters provides so many great things. Here's an example of one for an open house. You see, all you really have to pop in here is your club name, your city, state, and country, your specific links, the dates and times. They offer it all to you right there. So if you're just getting started in public relations, maybe this is a way that you can dip your toe in and send out your first release. One other thing for press releases, and some people have mixed opinions, in my firm, and for most people I've talked to, we don't include things as attachments to reporters. It's more likely to be flagged as spam in their account. You can copy and paste all of this right into an email. Write a little cover note. Hey, wanted to send this press release about an upcoming open house. If you need more details, let me know. Full release, paste it below. And then just throw it right in the email. Much less likely to get marked as spam if you're not sending attachments. You can embed a photo too right in there. Where do you find these templates on their website? Thank you, Pat, for the question. I send, we will send it in the reminder email as well. Uh, there is a link right on Toastmasters International that has like a media relations hub with all types of resources and we'll include it in the follow-up materials. If you got the email from me reminding you to come, it's also in there as well. And they're all downloads once you get in there. I don't know if any of you have used their club newsletter templates. I use them for my club, but it's similar to that where it's a Word doc that you can download and edit. When in doubt, I always think this pyramid, pyramid is really helpful. Think about what's most newsworthy info. Don't bury the lead. You're not trying to get people to read your book and get to chapter two. You just want them to figure out what's most important. You want them to know if the story is going to be of interest to them. You want them to figure out if they want to learn more very quickly on. If you're having an open house on Tuesday at 5 p.m. and everyone's welcome, that should be very apparent as they scan things. It's like anything nowadays. People are going to spend a maximum probably five to seven seconds looking at your email when they open it. Utilize bold, underline if there's things that are must-have that you really want them to see. The next is those important details. Maybe the open house has a special speaker. Maybe it's hosted at a really cool place. Maybe you're inviting a youth program to do a graduation. <coughs> those types of details can go next. And then other general info. There's lots of things that you want to share that you think are important. Put them more towards the bottom if they're not super relevant. Maybe you want to include something about the names of your officers, or maybe there's something about how many people have achieved the DTM status. Things that are important to you, but that might not resonate as much with the reporter can certainly still be included. Just put them down lower so that way if they're just scanning the top, they'll get everything that they really need to see first right away. The cool thing about when you're writing a full press release, like the one I just sent, is there's usually a specific place that news outlets will flag that you can send those. These are all specific to Chester and Montgomery County, where the District 38 group is located. But my Chesco has a place where you can create a free account, submit a press release or a guest article. I've submitted one to here on behalf of a client and gotten it published that way. Really easy to do, really easy to work with. Some have specific emails for their news department. So you can just email that editors at timetarot.com. If you also find a specific reporter that you think the press release matches, feel free to put them and the editor's email in there as well if it makes sense for both of them. And sometimes they just have these submit news buckets where you can just copy and paste your details right in there. The second part, <laughs> pitching. Pitching is definitely harder, right? Because you're trying to get a reporter to spend their time on you. They're not just reading a press release and then publishing it. They're committing to spending time with you, to learning more about your story, to setting up a time to perhaps even visit. 
It's more of a time commitment and it's harder to get reporters to say yes to, especially as newsrooms continue to shrink, but it definitely is possible. If you want to be ambitious and try some of this, I really encourage you to. This would be something great if you're in District 38 in particular to reach out to me. If not, reach out to whoever your public relations manager is and think about how you guys can strategize on this. This is something that I pulled right from one of our process documents at AKCG. This is how we think about it. So we start with what media outlet reporters are most likely to cover your content. These are your tier one targets. For some of our really hyper local clubs and stories, the local patch is a great place to start. They're online news. They share only about really local things. You can search by your zip code and find the local, the most local one to you. Think about your local town paper. It's probably something you might not even think about. It probably comes in your mailbox once a month. If you're shopping in your local ShopRite or Giant, they probably have free versions of it. Those hyper-local papers, you might be thinking, eh, do I even want a story in there? Yes, you do. Those are the types of outlets that people will actually pick it out of their mailbox. They'll see the story. They'll read it because it's right there. We had someone at Voorhees Toastmasters Club come to one of our meetings and say that's why she came because she saw the story of Jocelyn on the front page. So I promise you that those very local stories do work. I will caveat that most of the reporters in those local town papers are volunteers. So be patient as they tend to be a little slower to respond to pitches. The next one is what media outlets do you hope cover this content? These are stretch goals. You will never know until you try. Definitely don't pitch the Philadelphia Business Journal human interest story. It really doesn't make sense for their outlet. But if you have a story that does relate, go for it. Philadelphia Inquirer or New York Times or any of those bigger papers, they have all types of sections. They have regional sections, they have culture sections, they have faith sections, sports, anything, you name it. Just take the time to read it and figure out what reporter or what section might make the most sense. <clears throat> Our third thought process is maybe there's a relationship you want to develop. This might be particularly relevant if you find a reporter who has previously written about Toastmasters or maybe one that's participated in Toastmasters Club or someone that you just really like to start to form a connection with. One of the easiest ways to do that if you don't have a story ready at that time, if you see a great story they wrote, share it with them. Just send them a note. Hey, saw your coverage of XYZ, really beautifully written story. Me and my family talked about it at the dinner table. They appreciate that type of note and it can start to form the relationship for later on when you might have a story to share. And then visuals that we can provide to a reporter. This is really important. If you have a picture of someone, send it. If you have a club picture, send it. If there's something fun that you have, maybe you have a short video clip from an event, feel free to use it. Those types of things will help you stand out. Oop. Tips for writing the pitch. Reporters want stories that stand out. Imagine you are the reporter. What would excite you about covering the story? Reporters will always challenge us to say, what's the hook? Why should I write about it? We should have those answers. That's where you can really reflect back on those pearls, the person-centered, eccentric, accessible, refreshing, local, or shareable. Again, the fact that your club exists isn't news that a reporter is really interested in. What they are interested in is some type of angle. They want to know about people. They want to know what interesting or extraordinary things people within their own local neighborhoods are doing. If you think it's interesting, if you sat down at the dinner table and told your family about it, or a company newsletter wrote about it, those are the types of things that people are seeing are resonating. Read the reporter's articles, watch their segments, peruse their socials. There's really no shortcut to writing a good pitch. You need to know the reporter, you need to know what they're interested in. Oftentimes our team will take the exercise of just sitting. And if it's our goal to really get someone on 6ABC, someone will just be assigned to watch that morning segment every day for a week. What do they talk about? 
Is there something funny or personal that the reporters mentioned? Is there something you could play off of? Was there a story that's related? Maybe they talked about public speaking in a segment. Maybe they were talking about diversity and inclusion one day and your story relates to that. Those little personal touches will really help. And then find a way to relate your pitch to what they're interested in. This link at the bottom will send out as well, but it has some of these things explained out in more detail. So here's a pitch example. This is a great spot for you guys to drop some things in the chat. This one's super short. So drop in the chat things that make it a good pitch or why you think that a reporter may have actually read this. Hi, Jessica. I just read your story on the health benefits of the keto diet. I've got a good one for you. A new survey of 2,000 keto followers that found 87% of keto dieters report that they cheat on the diet. Happy to provide more context and findings. Thanks. Feel free to unmute or drop it in the chat. What do you think worked about that pitch? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. It's short. Absolutely. I'm sure he could have wrote four paragraphs about why that reporter should contact him. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, he, he's familiar with her content. Absolutely. Yeah, these are all great and exactly what I pulled out from it too. They had read the reporter's recent content. They took the time to send her something that is going to be relevant. They're not sending duplicative information. They're sending something that will add to something she wrote about. Really short, but it gets the point across. I think this is great. Great example. And then one more for you. Hi, Kennedy Smith. I read your newspaper's recent article on job opportunities for high school dropouts, and I wanted to discuss an additional story that could go perfectly with the topic. Our staffing business just started a new program where we work with local charities and community centers to help high school dropouts discover their interests and go over their career dreams. Let me know if I can provide any additional information. Anything different from this one, or it could even be the same type of good things? Yeah, and I'm reading from the last one. People also like when you acknowledge their work. Absolutely. One thing I'll start off the bath is, hi, they write the reporter's name. This is clearly to that specific person, right? Similar elements from what we saw last time. They had read the reporter's recent content. They were adding new information. Although they were talking about their organization, it was something that would benefit people beyond just their organization. And again, right in the exit, they have a clear number to reach them and an email for them to get a hold of as well. If a reporter has to think about how to contact you, they won't. Just make it as easy and apparent as humanly possible. This is really important. Follow up with the reporter. Don't follow up 27 times, right? <laughs> but two, two emails, maybe even a third follow-up, so the initial email, second, third, is appropriate. This is something that came from Muckrack, um, which is an organization that writes a lot about public relations. They have a database where people can find reporters and stuff, so they offer a lot of free resources around this. In the state of journalism, 83% of journalists said it's okay to follow up within the first week, while very few prefer to be followed up after two weeks' time. If you send uh, something on Monday and your open house that Saturday, follow up on Thursday. Give them some new information. This is a great way to have a reason to follow up. You can just follow up and say, hey, just making sure you saw my note. Not bad, but not super effective. Do you have something else you can offer them? Maybe you didn't include a photo in the first email, but you have one to include in the second. 
Maybe you just found out that you added a second speaker to your event. Maybe you found out that the local mayor is stopping by your open house. Maybe you found out that somebody donated something really cool for your open house for people to enjoy, whatever it may be. You have something extra to share or quote from someone, much better way to follow up with a reporter. This is super important. We've done all the work, right? We found the story, we pitched the story, we sent the press release, someone's really interested in some more details. Make it stick. Like I said, give a direct way for people to reach you and answer in a timely manner. If a reporter calls and needs a detail, try to get back to them in a timely manner, whether that's on email, text, or phone call. This is especially important. Have your spokesperson ready. If you're asking a reporter to talk to member XYZ about a topic, make sure they're not on vacation. Make sure they're comfortable with being chatting with a reporter. Make sure that they're going to have some general availability. Maybe get a day or time in general that works for them just so you have that ready in your back pocket. After the interview or after the press release runs, feel free to send a thank you note and if relevant, follow up with pertinent details. Follow up with headshots, links, logos. Do you want to make sure someone's name is spelled right or their titles reflected correctly? Those are all times that you can do that. This is super important. And I saw a couple questions that were reflective of this. Media relations is great by itself, but it's really just part of a larger marketing strategy. One story in a newspaper is great, and maybe someone will show up to your club because of that. But think about how you can utilize that even further. How can you promote it on social media, for example, or your company news or your Toastmasters newsletter? Here's an example of when we got Jocelyn's story in the Philadelphia Inquirer, I posted on social, I got like 30 likes or something, pretty modest. We threw 50 bucks behind it on a Facebook boost, and suddenly that went up to 400 likes. 19 people shared it, 34 comments, and that's just on Facebook, not even the attention it received on our other social media platforms. So not only do we get earned media, we were then able to leverage it as a paid media opportunity and to boost it even further and make sure that story was seen by even more people. And partner organizations. This one I think is really effective and really needs a personal touch. The Rotary and Toastmasters have a partnership. I've presented to a local Rotary group before. Maybe your local Chamber of Commerce has a place for member news and you could submit a story. Maybe you work at a corporation who's thought about having a corporate club and a local press release would be a great way to follow up with them. Hey, I remember you were interested at some point in starting a Toastmasters club. Just wanted to let you know how it's helped XYZ in her professional development or whatever that looks like. Always think about ways you can repurpose content that you work so hard to get. Let me stop sharing my screen so I can see everyone. Looks like we have about a little less than... 10 minutes or so left if there were any questions that people wanted to talk through. Public relations, media relations, it's a big field, a big topic, lots of different nuances and ways that you could go about it. So again, if you're in District 38, please feel free to schedule some time with me one-on-one. -on -one. If you have a story you want to think about, we'll send all these follow-up materials that you can read and digest and think about. But I'll give everyone a minute to think about if they had any questions they want to ask now with our remaining time left. And uh, feel free to drop it in the chat if you don't want to call it out. I have a quick one. I'm from District 53. I'm Scott okay. Davis. Hi, and nice I'm you. part of a local club that meets online. And we only have about five. I mean, we have like eight, nine members. But the thing is, a lot of time people don't show up. And then we have a specialized Zoom link. So we can't really publicize the link, but I guess I could just put my name and email in there to contact me if they're ever interested. Yeah, I think that's a great way to do it. And you're right. Sometimes with Zoom links, it can be tricky, right? Because we've had people kind of like bomber Zooms and stuff before. So 
I would say whatever your normal cadence is. If people normally reach out to your VP membership and they send the link out after, I think it's fine to send a direct email or encourage them to visit your website to learn more. I've tried in the past to submit a press release and uh, we rarely got in a lot of times to the local paper, but they don't do that anymore really. So, Yeah, unfortunately it's, it's definitely an art, not a science. Thank you. You're welcome. Nope. Are you raising your hand, Harold? Go ahead. Yes. Yes, Hannah. Thank you very much. Very good information here. I'm particularly interested about how you would promote an open house if you if you have any specific things that you would add to some of the things that you say here. Uh, do I would would an open house be worth the while to touch and touch bases with a reporter? or just to write articles or what? You know what I yeah. mean by open house, right? I do, yes. So one one way, which is in public relations, obviously social media is great for that and Facebook events so that people can invite their networks to join and come as well. I would say it's fine to invite a local media member to an open house. I would download that template that's on the Toastmasters International site, pop in your stuff so that it looks a little bit more official. Make sure you include exactly what time they can come. Maybe think about a 10 or 15 minute portion that would be most relevant for them to attend. They might not want to sit through a whole open house, but maybe if you could call out that someone's going to give a speech on a particularly interesting topic, you're doing something super fun for table topics that day, you could highlight that to get their interest and let them know, hey, just stop by for 10 minutes, we'll be doing this super cool thing. Um, or if there's a particular venue. So yeah, I think it's fine. Do I think it's super likely a reporter's going to come out to a club open house? Maybe not, but I do think that you could utilize some tools um, in order to get it more weight. One thing that would be helpful, a lot of outlets online have free community calendars that nonprofits can post on. So like if libraries host events or churches or whatever, they, they can share it on those calendars. And usually if you create an account and submit it to the calendar and you're a nonprofit, they will put it on there for the community to see. So that might be another tactic that you could take. Super, thank you very much. That's good tips. I, I, I would assume that the same thing would go for a contest, am I right? Yeah, if the, if the contest was being hosted in person, you could invite a reporter to come out. And I would definitely highlight if there's someone who advances to a more prominent level. When I was pitching Jocelyn's story about her winning the competition, what really helped me was highlighting what she spoke about because it was about her personal journey through her triathlon experience and that like overcoming challenge and her experience participating in a local race helped localize it and make it more accessible to people. So think about even what human interest thing you could pull out from the content of the contest as well. Thanks. You're welcome. I know we have a couple of minutes left, but Anne, I know you want to grab your picture, so maybe we can uh, take off the, do you know how to set it so you can see only the video participants, so that way only the folks with the background will be included? Yes, I do. Thank you. Come on, everyone. Show your beautiful faces. Come on, Joe Santee. I've heard all about you, and I've never met you in person. This is my one and only opportunity. Come on. I heard a lot of good things about you. Let's go. <laughs> I love to see these faces. Can't entice you, huh, Joe? All right. <laughs> I'm good trying. turn out. Now, Joe has some difficulties with her, her video, so she's unable to turn it all on. All right. So I'm going to hide the non-participants, and I'm going to take a picture. Give me a minute. Yes, and while she does that, thanks to Anne who organized all these master classes and helped co facilitate. All right, Dave Jones is here. All right, I got him. Oh, that looks wonderful. Do you know Zoom has that app now? Yes, it's awesome. So they take pictures of just us, like individually? Yes. 
Oh, I thought you were taking the group photo. I was like waiting. To I smile. did. It turned into a group photo. It turned into a group oh, photo. Oh, I see. It's all together for you. So That's this is Chris Helen. I have a question. When you said that uh, for the teaching, you saying that email, the source of to get that email is reading, let's say, the inquirer or any other newspaper. And that email, if they provide that information under the article, that's where you get that information. Maybe you yeah. mentioned that, but I think. No, that's okay. Yeah, so if you have a specific publication in mind, you might want to search like the Philadelphia Inquirer newsroom and a page will likely pop up where most of them are. And oftentimes they link their Twitter handles and then their email addresses. The other ways I suggested was sometimes they put it in their Twitter bios. And if they don't, you can DM them sometimes and get it that way. You can also see usually outlets format their emails all in the same way. So it might be like H Merchant at Inquire. So if you find like 10 that are all written that same way, probably the rest are as well. Thank you. Great job, Hannah. Let's hear it up for Hannah. Are there any more questions for her? If not, come on mute and let's hear it up. This was a phenomenal session. Yeah, thank Very you. And look at us. We're right on time at 8 p.m. So thanks everyone for joining today. It was great to see some new faces.